John Paul just messaged to say that Captain uh, Fall was canceled. Oh shit! That I, I was I legitimately that's how long like, it took me. <laughs> <laughs> I was just sitting here for a minute. I'm like, why does that sound familiar? Oh shit! All right, that was that almost interesting show. Episode 461 of the TV Dudes, The Curse. Hey, it's Les from the TV Dudes. I'm here this week with... Me! And not Randy. I guess we should say who me is. Nick is me. Nick is him. Uh, And not Randy, who is off playing board games with a bunch of other people who are not TV Dudes. And uh, I get it. I get it. Uh, But he is spared talking about The Curse, the show that haunts this show this week. Uh, so it'll just be Nick and I, and, uh, we'll see if we can't muddle through. Indeed. First of all, uh, we're going to start as we do every week with our TV diaries. The Diaries of the Television Dudes. Brought to you by only the finest cocaine wine. since it's just Nick and I are going to be nearly identical with the exception I notice of uh, Get Gotti that I see you watched. Yes, uh, I watched, I told you about I watched Fear City. Yes. Right? Yes. So I watched Fear City on Netflix, which was, and I watched a couple more episodes of that, which is basically just a documentary about uh, the mob in the 80s and how hard they were to take down and blah, blah, blah. Uh, And apparently, like, there's only three episodes of it. Did I finish it or not? I don't know. It got less interesting as they <laughs> got into infrastructure and like when they like, uh, and it was like the real devious thing about the mob was all their legitimate bills, business holding it. And once they get into construction, it's not like it's not interesting, but like a, like a textbook is interesting. <laughs> and, and it's, and honestly, like they, you know, they bring in Rudy Giuni- Giuliani for like the second episode as the, as the big game changer. And they actually have him uh, come on and and it's like, well, you know, uh, I was an aggressive DA, uh, DA at that point, or I was an assistant DA at that point. And then when the DA position came open, that was my dream job. And uh, the to his credit, he doesn't say it, but everyone else seems to say like say that like, hey, it was his genius idea to use the RICO rule basically to prosecute all these people in a criminal conspiracy rather than separately. And I think I've been on here before yeah. as when they. They the first episode basically states that this was a law a long time and a lot of fucking cops just didn't just didn't fucking use it. Yeah, think yeah. About, like it, it's not it's not that genius of a revelation. Like <laughs> it's like he's the first one who had the revolutionary idea to look back through the law and find one that applied and pl- and find one applied. Yeah, not br- not bring about a new law. Right. He's taking someone else's law and idea that. Honestly, should have been used. Should have been being used in the seventies, and just decided, hey, maybe we try this thing. This guy thought of, and I think we can all agree that no matter what we think about Rudy Giuliani, there's been some decline. <laughs> yes, yes, uh, I would say much of that man's greatness ran down the sides of his face. <laughs> and I'm, I'm saying like, oh shit! And this is what he's most known for, as cleaning up. New York in the 80s. Yeah, there's very much a, an honest like argument to be had of like what the fuck happened to Rudy, Rudy Giuliani. Not that he was ever like the great mind of the planet or anything, but like he seemed to mm-hmm. have been a guy who at least had and he's at some, least a, some real I mean, ethics. Take away who the politics of yeah. what he did with stop and fr- like and, and and violating civil rights. He at least seemed like a effective district attorney. I'll, I, I will grant him that. He seemed like an effective district attorney, and I cannot imagine him being an effective district attorney today. Now. <laughs> no. I, it's hard to imagine even a younger him. Like, the same man was at one point. Yeah. But uh, that got me to watching, I think uh, it's the same producers and some of the same people involved uh, because it's the same. it's in the same time period, Get Gotti which was, uh, they were talking about the crime families, which are, oh my God, the crime families are fantastically, like you'd, you'd, you'd think that 
uh, I'm glad that Scorsese and all these other crime movie people made their names more realistic. <laughs> right. Like, like Carmine Falcone sounds actually realistic against the Bonobo family. <laughs> <laughs> I've not watched Get Gotti, but the the still frame image that sta- like of, of him standing there, the, when we watched My Blue Heaven, you were like, man, I can hear the accent coming off of Steve Martin's hey. clothes. Like, that dude stands in Italian. Hey. And that's a... Uh... That was what was interesting about him, apparently, was that all these the older guys were uh, wanted to not be noticed. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. Gotti was like, Gotti took the Pablo Escobar approach of people loved him. Like they thought he was a kind of a character and pretty fun. And uh, one of the only like he actually just took over one of the I forget. Uh, Colon, uh, Colanto or not Colombo. That was the the guy that did the offer. Yeah, he's not the crazy uh, fuck that. That comes after the Colombo family, right? <laughs> well, Jill Colombo. Uh, the, but, uh, and then you can listen on the wiretaps and listen to these guys, and you realize that gangster impressions come from somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> and all these guys are like, yeah, I don't know. I think uh, this guy might not be so good for the organization. <laughs> like, what the f- Who is that actor that they got for this reenactment? Oh, I'm sorry. That's the real tape? Oh, goodness. Like, I, I somehow feel that it's racist when you do your own voice. <laughs> I don't know how that works, but I feel like you shouldn't speak. You're doing some damage here, and I don't know if you can I don't even do mean it. legally. I just mean, I just mean <laughs> no one should record you doing that. You know, your kids have to grow up. Yeah, you heard the birth. <laughs> <laughs> your dad sounds like a cartoon rat. <laughs> I honestly thought one of them was going to be ta- like, oh, we, man, well, they told us to get them toitles, didn't they? <laughs> <laughs> like, the, like the, the, their voices are so fucking... You can hear what all these guys turn into if you mutated them. <laughs> yeah, apparently that was a big thing, is that they could... Uh, it, it was not... They didn't have to tell someone to kill you. They had to tell someone not to kill you. Like... If if someone was perceived as a problem and you didn't say anything, that was that was apparently tacit permission to like take care of it. Like you just did. Def- yeah. Silence means you're going to off him. Yeah. Right. And I'm like, well, of course not. They didn't want to open their mouths and sound silly. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. I guess it is more legally uh, <laughs> somewhere at some point. A family lawyer was like, look, guys, can we just switch it to a default? Uh, the the onus is on you to say do not kill him. There's nothing legally wrong with being recorded adamantly saying keep him alive. They have a couple recordings <laughs> of these guys saying no, don't kill that guy, which is not a crime. <laughs> which is code for kill everyone else mentioned in this conversation. Ah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I didn't finish that one either. They're 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 kind of interesting, but it actually led me down more of a rabbit hole of. Uh, what do you call uh, history buffs on uh, YouTube? I watched that involved with uh, Narcos and some of that. That's a local guy of yours, I think. Uh, Nick Hodges does that YouTube channel. Uh, actually, pretty pretty interesting. I really like. There's plenty of examples that he execution killed a guy this way. Uh, you know, there's there was rumors based off of this, so it it has the spirit of history. If an I does he do that cadence that bullets over blockbusters does to yeah. every single sentence? Does to every single sentence. <laughs> Well, then I don't know about this. But you have to understand. <laughs> Man, I want to watch more. I, I, I have watched almost every video on that dude's channel. Lisa ruined it for us. And, and, it, and like, I can't unhear it. Yeah, ever since Lisa. I want to blame Lisa for this specifically, but she ruined this for us. Right. Yeah, and then all of a sudden, Lee, all of a sudden Lisa noticed that he like, always talks like the same this. way. Like this. da 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 Yeah, it, and after she's after like two or three times of her going da 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 now I can never unhear it. She's I want to be madder, but she's not wrong. You have to get back and ruin something she likes for no fucking reason. But we can't ruin something she likes because she was watching Six Feet Under, which I actually ended up watching. That's the problem. Yeah, the last I was just thinking was like, well, what's the last thing she? No, I'm not ruining Six Feet Under. That was a. Definitely, a, 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 even just watching a couple of those disparate ep- episodes, I was like, shit, 60 Under is a good fucking show. It really is. It's so solid. Even as, like, weird and, I mean, it's, 
it's like after the Sopranos, it may be one of the number two or number three binge show that ever existed. Like we were just then like, I could get another DVD and we could just stay up and watch one more. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I think Alan Ball had just come off of writing, uh, American beauty or working on American beauty. And, uh, God fucking loved, loved six feet under. And I didn't realize Lisa had never watched. I never really watched it. Uh, well, I mean, it's where Michael C. Hall came from. And right. That was so fun when she was like, Oh my God, is this show where Dexter came from? Yes, it is. So try to watch this as a persnickety gay dude who is not murdering. Well, people. they they showed the one where he's uh, his his partner, uh, uh, the black cop. They got to go look for the foot when they're looking for the foot, and he goes yeah. like, "Oh, you want to mess with my partner? He's the real psycho." And it shows Michael C. Hall in the cop car ha! with this weird yes. mouth breather face of his that is just like his 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 mouth is open. I'm like, what the fuck? Why are you looking like? Almost like I wanted to be offended on Michael C. Hall. Like, hey, okay, maybe he has a re- he has a resting kill- serial killer face. Okay, right, right. It's so God, he's so tight wound in the car too, and he just looks over and like. <laughs> but like someone watched yeah. that, watched that, and was like, hmm, uh, like maybe a, uh, can we do a show about that stars a serial killer? Because <laughs> I gotta say, this yeah, I mean, Hall every- boy is giving me some fucking vibes. And everybody on that show is just a fucking powerhouse. Like, I mean, you got Freddie Rodriguez, you got uh, Peter Krause, uh, Francis Conroy, uh, Lauren Ambrose. Like, every every single actor on that show is Dude, Freddie Rodriguez and Michael C. Hall's just casual cops. Oh, I think we got a casket climber. Really? You think, I think she's so old. Uh, <laughs> also, the, the how kitchen. fucking excited he is that he built a fake foot. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. No, no, I had a leg of lamb. Like, he's so excited. Well, why wouldn't you? He, he saved the day of, with he, that leg of lamb. Yes. Formed a leg of lamb into, I, man. Yeah, I love as the show goes on that they get, like, when, when the bigger and bigger firms try to buy out their funeral home, uh, it, it becomes apparent that he has, like, known around funeral directors, like, real talent for, like, how fucked up is your body? Yeah. No, man, he can make it look normal. Get him a picture of your loved one. If he has to build the face out of Play-Doh, it's going to look like your mom when he's done. Yeah. It's weird. Which is a skill that, I mean, my dad looked like fucking Marlon Brando by the time it was done. <laughs> and like, you know, and fat Brando, not like, like, <laughs> not, not like, yeah, not like early career Elvis. Not, not, not yeah. an early Brando, but like Godfather, <laughs> fat Brando, like what the fuck, why? Who sprayed DDT in this man's face? So you come yeah. to me on the day of my own funeral. <laughs> what the fuck? But uh, yeah, also I hate Nate. I I forget like I hate him more as the like in the in the final season. He really they what they do with him in the final season kind of really annoys me right before his mm-hmm. death, which is like you know just because he dies doesn't make him sympathetic. He he's fucking annoying and wishy washy, and I hated Brenda through the entire run. Like the first time I I, I watched, well, it. Brenda's I a got bad so influence. Irritated at her. Like, and that's, I think what irritated Nate, me is because Nate does not be I, I was dating the, her. If anybody, that's the thing is like, Nate could like, like he's making bad decisions that annoy me. And, and then, so it's, it's like, well, I'm annoyed with this main character. Why? Oh, you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so like whatever annoyances I had with Nate, I, I think I just it blamed on, put on Brenda, uh, because between her and Billy, like they're straight dangerous. Well, man, I forgot about Billy. I don't think we got to Billy yet. No, nah, she's not. I, I'm eager to see, uh, eager to get to watch Lisa watch this. It's going to be fun. Uh, yeah, what else did you watch? Let's see. So I kept watching on iZombie, and I ran into exactly the episode I ran into last time I did a rewatch of iZombie. That, that happens when you rewatch a thing. You end up hitting. Yes, <laughs> you end up hitting the same episodes again. And yeah, there's a point in the fourth it, season But where... this one always comes as a surprise to you. <laughs> right. I mean, like, there's, oh, right. You, for, you forget that there's a room full of people. And it's, you know, it's going to be somebody else's episode. Like, so, and these things rotate. And this is the first time that really egregiously on the show, there's, there's one in, I think, season four, where she eats, uh, it's actually the brain of Michaels, uh, the goalie from Shorty. Uh, and he's a kindergarten teacher. What's an aqua dog? No, like preschool, preschool teacher. And, uh, and she gets really like, she talks to everyone like this for the whole episode. Sure. As if they're babies. Mm-hmm. And, and I get being on preschool brain, but it's not a, that's not how teacher that guy talk. talks. Like, like 
the other half of his personality was that he was sleeping with like three of the moms. <laughs> and so they were pretty sure that like a, a jealous lover murdered him. And so none of that, just talking down to everybody in this condescending baby voice. And, and I'm like, ah, man, whoever show this was this week. I would, I, I already missed, know that missed the, the it's math not, on this, the, the it's on a like a network. It's not going to be. A, it's cute. It's not going to be a dig dip. And but does she get the sexual preferences uh, and sexual proclivities of the people? Like she gets her personalities, but does she like? Yes, yes, that is established. Yeah. Oh, okay, she goes over at one point. She's dating another zombie, and she goes over there, and they're going to have their big romantic dinner. And he's like halfway through. He's like, I have to tell you something. I'm ninety nine percent certain that the brain I'm on is really gay. <laughs> He's like, I, I feel I'm feeling nothing right now, like at all. But earlier today, I saw a picture of Idris Elba and the first thought in my brain was yummy. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure. OK. Yeah. So, so like it, it definitely uh, I think they end up like watching Sex in the City and like eating a bunch <laughs> of ice cream together or something. Yeah. Yeah, it's absolutely. So it, and, and for whatever reason, then this one just hits the wrong side of the line of it for me where I'm like, damn it. So I'm going to have to give it like a week and then skip this episode and go back <laughs> so that I can finish out Eyes Zombie. That's how I got through it last time. Uh, watched a few episodes of Supernatural, uh, annoyed with Eyes Zombie and looking for something else. And uh, gosh, Supernatural is its own fucking animal. Uh, what a what a weird its own universe show. Uh, not really great, not bad, just Supernatural. It is Supernatural. Uh, so I watched a couple episodes of that and. I don't know. I, I don't engage enough with it to to really watch. Like it doesn't compel me to like really pay attention for a long binge. Honestly, it Supernatural be feels on. like it belongs on USA. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Like it is. Like, it's 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 and honestly, it's for CW is where it was first on, right? Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. for CW, that's like one of their best shows, and it feels like absolutely. It's it kind of feels like it's kind of like middling of like USA. You know? Yeah. Yeah, the 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 most fun thing about it, and like I feel like for Supernatural, I should go ahead and say the funnest thing about it is that it runs fifteen seasons, fifteen million seasons. Uh, yeah, uh, we watched The Killer, which uh, we'll discuss on a Patreon uh, here, in a, uh, I believe next week. Uh, Maybe we should talk about this. We should we put Leslie after. Vernon off another week, or and just oh, you know what? Folks can drop a buck an episode and find out. Indeed. Or they can just go to our Facebook. I'm sure we're going to announce it. Uh, but to hear it, a bucket episode. Uh, so, yeah, and the killer uh, was super cool. And you can come here and discuss it. Uh, watched uh, Haunting of the Queen Mary, which was not super cool. It was a giant fucking mess. Uh, holy crap. I think they wanted this to be a trilogy of movies, and I hope that they just stopped. That was terrible. Uh, I believe it's on Hulu. Alice Eve, a uh, bunch of wet ghosts. Super fucking weird. <laughs> <laughs> just anyway. I love the descriptor wet ghosts. Well, yeah, you know what makes these ghosts different? It's they're a couple different timelines. Just God. It it does have a couple of like gruesome cool kills, but it's just not worth putting up with the fucking That's I mean that's coaches. that's the onus of the hit song though, WAP, wet ass poltergeist. Right, right. Uh now you're haunted by this wet ass poltergeist. Then I watched uh, Elevator Game, which was not substantially better than Queen Mary. Uh it was less of a mess linearly. Like, like it just at least started at the start of its story and went through it. But, uh, yeah, uh, elevator game was weirdly acted, weirdly written, weirdly edited. Like everything was weird. Uh, and not in a, I mean, well, they called I, it elevator not, game. I, I, They're I say not the even... word weird. Like it's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. It, uh, like, I really like the, I, I like the premise of like new old, don't step off the path in the woods kind of things. Like here's, here's new rules for modern technology. That's been around now for centuries. Like, I don't know how long, I don't know when the first elevator was invented. It's gotta be over a hundred years. Uh, and, and like, here's this creepy new thing that can, and like, no, um, I mean, for God's sake, the, whatever, uh, scared stiff or whatever that, uh, creeped out that we watched that one episode of the kids that get into another reality through the elevator. I don't remember. Uh, it was like, yeah, it's like two kids. Like a, they go looking for their oh, little sister. Yes, right. Yeah. That handled this better than elevator game. Mm -hmm. uh, but there was real money thrown at this. I, I don't know. Uh, then we watched Puppet Man. And I was really hoping to get a winner out of one of the three of these. And Puppet Man was better than the other two. Uh, it's the most I can say about it. 
Puppet Man's over on Shudder. Uh, I think it's also where I watched Elevator Man. Or sorry, Elevator Game. The trailer for Puppet Man was rad. Dude, it watch has the a trailer. couple of kills in it that I've never fucking seen. It's one of those. It's one of those movies where, like, dude, the trailer is gonna. Is trailer's way better than the movie is really gonna give you anything. Oh value on, man. man, absolutely. The trailer has all the best kills. Uh, that girl setting her head on fire in the trailer is fucking fantastic. Mm-hmm. Uh, they they intercut that with their other best kill, but overall, meh. That movie again was was just a mess. It has a moment in it where we think we know how the monster works. Like we really like know the physics of it. And then suddenly like she throws herself off a bridge and then the thing throws her back up on top of it. I'm like, nope, that's not how it's worked the entire time. It it should make a slide whistle noise. (laughs) Like it should, it should like, oh my gosh, it's, you're right. That's the moment of like, okay, there are no rules. Fuck it. (laughs) And that was the problem with the elevator game. There are no rules to how that monster goes. You would think that that'd be a very rules based movie, but no. Then I watched some Bob's Burgers, which are always great. Uh, just fucking hilarious every episode. I uh, watched some Billions. We're, uh, there is an entire final season of Billions I've not seen, so I'm kind of catching back up. And it's, it's fun. It's been cool. Never actually watched. It's, I, I, when I first started, like the first few seasons feel like true prestige television. Like, like it's trashy, but, but really well done. Mm-hmm. And it definitely slips there. There's a point where kind of suit style, like you, you can't keep these people in the same orbit and then not just seem ridiculous. Like you have so many characters that are all about taking emotion out of this decision-making and being sharks. And every week they are the most dramatic babies. <laughs> and like after a while it's ridiculous and the characters have to start calling them on it. Like it, any show that runs long enough starts to get into good fight suits uh good like territory where you know you're having characters alias i remember tuning into a later like later season episode of alias there's like five people in a room that i've seen try to murder each other all sure in various seasons for different reasons i mean come on and man. like yeah, that's... okay even if even if two or three of you got okay there's no way you could get all five of these people into one room at one time <laughs> <laughs> like it's just not possible uh so yeah uh billions then I watched a couple episodes of Community because, man, I haven't, haven't rewatched Community in forever, and I'm not going to. I'm not doing a straight through rewatch, but and just, just jumping in on episodes, some killer episodes. Sure. Holy shit, Community is still so good. Then uh, we recently ran into the problem with Chucky episodes going away. I uh, I was looking for something to watch and thought, holy shit, because it was boring. I stopped watching AHS Delicate. Right. But there's probably several episodes piled up and mm-hmm. boring or not. It, it was interesting. It was just slow and boring. Uh, like the, the overall premise. So like, cool. Now that it's all done, maybe I can just uh, jump to. No, there was one more episode I hadn't watched and then they stopped. That's as far as they got before the strike. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, there's uh, there's a part one and part two, but not for any reason that they meant to do <laughs> just because <laughs> they didn't get their shit together in time. Uh, that's as far as they got. Uh, Quantum Leap, I think, only has nine episodes in the can. They took a week off, but they are coming back. But they actually got enough shot and done before the either strike that uh, that they seem to have timed it out right. I think they are right back into production. So All there right. may not be a gap for Quantum Leap. But everything else, gap. Also, I figured out what is happening. AHS Delicate is based on a book. It's the first American horror se- uh, story season based on a book called Delicate Condition. And from what I read online, there are several episodes that are exactly following the book. That's why it's not three or four stories all together at once happening at a million miles an hour. It is a slow book adaptation. Mm-hmm. Like, and, and the complaint I keep seeing over and over is it doesn't feel like American Horror Story. And it doesn't because it's based on a fucking book. Yeah. None of them are. Yeah, no. They should have adapted three books that have nothing to do with each other. Now that would and be get the rights. Now that get would the be rights more like, to mash them up like an afternoon drive time DJ. And just one of those fucking... and one of those books happens to be uh, Anne Frank's diary and just like <laughs> right, right, mashed up with Bram Stoker's Dracula and uh, yeah, like just go go nuts with it. But no, uh, instead it, it may or may not be Rosemary's Baby. Uh, I don't really know what's happening, uh, and I will never, I guess, find out. Because it's been basically dropped for a year. Or uh, an indeterminate amount of time. Uh, anyway. Yeah. Uh, then I watched uh, the latest episode of Goosebumps, which 
uh, that show just gets cool. Uh, still, still is cool. Really enjoying the whole season of it. I think they've got one more this week and then, uh, it'll be done. And, uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> right now it's looking like slappy victorious. I'll tell you, uh, shit's not looking good for the goosebump kids. Uh, and then today I watched the Matt Rife Netflix special, which I really liked Matt Rife's, uh, YouTube specials. Uh, he did one only fans. He did one that was just crowd work. And then the, I think the best one, uh, Matthew Stephen Rife uh, kind of is about his granddad and is just a really good set of stand up. Mm-hmm. Uh, I feel like his Netflix special suffers from that that sophomore album kind of slump. Like, I don't think he had enough time to get all new material. This doesn't feel as polished or like as as road polished or as like meticulously worked and constructed as his previous specials felt. Like the jokes in them felt mapped out to a like. Uh-huh. damn put in the work and and this felt a little sloppier the theme wasn't quite there i still laughed it was still you know funny and worth my time i felt but i mean we it we, wasn't as good we were talking about it and we live workshopped and fixed one of his jokes concerning right, saturn right. and rings like and he'd have got there and he'd have got there i just don't think he there's was i i don't know i i feel like it was rushed also he feels a little defensive on this one I, he does a bit about being defensive in fact uh and it, it comes off as thin skinned. I it it's a nod direction. Uh it feels like he has a bit of a chip on his shoulder about um being the crowd work guy or being TikTok famous or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh and he should honestly, he should just drop that. And it's not it's not serving him. Um still I it's still funnier than most comedy specials. Uh but honestly, you should just go watch his uh his YouTube specials instead. Which is a shame because I do feel like the Netflix is going to be where a lot of people are going to see him for the first time. That's right. You showed me, uh, that reminds me, you showed me the fucking, this episode of uh, Saturday Night Live. That's right. Uh, Fanny and I watched uh, Boy Genius perform on Saturday Night Live and skipped around through the uh, skits as is the, the way longest that fucking watch opening SNL. skit they've done. Like it's two separate mer- musical My members. My Lord. And weirdly meta. Yeah. Well, it, so, so it's not just, it's a, it's a long opener, like cold open without Chalamet in it. Uh, where they do uh, Trump roasting not just the other Republicans, but the yeah. SNL people doing it. And then you get to Chalamet's uh, opening monologue and then song, which is a Wonka riff, which is cute. And then it takes a fucking hard left turn into the babyface rap. Yeah, which, is which just felt insane. like it should be one of just one of the other skits. Why, why wasn't it a full produced like Pete Davidson style? like fake music video or, mm. or you know, lonely or honestly, and video. for me, you could just cut the Willy Wonka opening bit. Cause I don't want to be reminded that Timothy Chalamet is that. making a yeah. fucking prequel that is going to yikes. That trailer is rough, dude. Yeah. 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 I really, I'm not, not looking forward to Although they uh, are. They, I do like the idea that they were excited to uh, announce their stuff again. Like a- a- actors, that oh yeah it was a funny skit like yeah about how uh the the strike's just been killing yeah. them and honestly i don't know like stuff. we were talking about it i don't know uh, how much that actually how much on marketing that actually matters but i mean mar the marvels just no, did a yeah, fucking marvels tank 47 well, uh, million was that something? opening day well, opening night really 70 yeah, million really opening, opening weekend overall so like, it's like record low for okay uh mcu which mm-hmm. uh you know i feel like has its own reasons going into stuff that's even before the movie came out, regardless of the quality of the movie. I don't think that really has anything to do with the opening box office, uh, maybe returning box office. Right. That would, I would say, but most people seem to want to pin it on certain elements, let's say, <laughs> but we have not seen it yet. <laughs> right, so right. I like the onion stick. <laughs> how can, how can you even tell that they're women when there's no, Oh yeah. That show. onion article you showed me rule. I think, I think that Onion article was brutal. Yeah, they just, uh, the Onion did one of their polls of like, we'll just ask a bunch of men why they didn't go see the Marvels. And they're brutal. Uh, was that a, everything for this week? Yeah, and uh, yeah, I think other than that, uh, everything else is on some kind of gap hiatus. Uh, I think I found myself watching more YouTube uh, than I normally do. You introduced me to Cinema Wins, uh, and I watched several of those, which are long because they basically take you Nearly minute yeah. by minute through a movie. I find it like it's it's the exact opposite in, in every way. It's the exact opposite of cin- cinema sense. It is the true opposite yeah. of of cinema sense. Yeah, where cinema sense bitches about or like finds every possible 
tags a movie because of things that aren't even fucking mistakes. Cinema wins. Man, Cinema Wins gives you props for things that yes. were complete accidents or or that you barely did. Like, well, it looks like they were nodding towards this, and that'd be a great right. theme. So I'm going to give them a point for it. <laughs> like, just the, the easiest kindergarten grade. It like, I, it, uh, I got to adjust the curve on this test. It, it really is. It's like everybody gets a gold star. And and honestly, sometimes that's just exactly what you need to watch. Uh, if it's a movie that sure. you love, like... God, watching the one for Dread was fucking badass. Watching the one for Suicide uh, Squad's a little different. Uh, yeah, yeah, Spider Verse, badass. Uh, Suicide Squad, mm, uh, yeah, everything great about like Blade Three is a little difficult. As we mentioned earlier, if you want to listen to us talk about Leslie Vernon, the killer, uh, we're probably going to talk about Marvel since we get Randy back in. You should go over to patreon.com slash TV dudes and throw us a buck an episode. Uh, you can hear a ton of content. We have a bunch and bunch of episodes over there, uh, along with the episode of the week. Uh, oh, also, I realize we haven't been mentioning it on the podcast, too. But if you are interested in uh, Les and I's project, we, you know, we mentioned about a year ago. Uh, Henshin, it actually is up and available now to be watched on YouTube. I don't think we've ever actually mentioned that. Yes. No, we talked about it during all the Kickstarter. We talked about mm-hmm. it some during production. But yes, you can go over to uh, Henshin yes, the before series Before it was on just uh, open to backers, but now it's open up to anybody. Yeah. They're, they're coming out once a week in uh, short little mini-sodes, uh, usually about two minutes, two and a half minutes of content each week. And uh, you can subscribe and check that out over at uh, YouTube. Just search for Henshin the series. Anyway, should we hit our main course? Yep, that seems like a good time as any to talk about the new Nathan Fielder, Emma Stone, Benny Safdie uh, show, The Curse. And I gotta say, like, Nathan Fielder, I'm hit or miss on. There's something wrong with that dude. Emma Stone, I'm not hit or miss on. She's fucking great. I love her. I don't know who didn't fully cook John Mulaney, but... (laughs) <laughs> right. And then Benny Safty is responsible for uh, fucking good time, uncut gems. Like I, I really like that dude. Good ass movies. Uh, so I was right. I was kind of excited for you know what this show would be. It looked uh, the the trailer of it has uh, Emma Stone and Nathan Fielder doing a uh, house flipping, but uh, they call it Fliplanthropy. I think is Ew. the name of their show. <laughs> and. Uh, it's house flipping in uh, neighborhoods they're trying to build up. Of course, they've got some kind of real estate type scam going. There's there's a lot of like slightly nefarious things that are hinted at in this oh. first episode. There's only one that episode reminds out. Me that Ula is just an, a natural reaction, and we forgot to talk about uh-huh, uh-huh. a lot of things on this show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. We did watch a bunch more Crapopolis, uh, which I still enjoy. And yeah. I don't we'll think talk about that more that. next week when the new episode shits. But yeah, yeah. The curse is. Again, the best parts in the trailer. I bitched about uh, fucking Puppet Man earlier. And yeah, once again, like the the best part of the 60 minute first episode is Fielder snatching $100 back out of the is little girl's tr- hand yeah. in a parking lot and her pointing and cursing like it, him. Which I is, curse you. What the? F- it's supposedly the crux of the yeah. show, but you know it's it not. Is, this is so much more about like their parents and a real estate deal. I'm used to Fielder being awkward, but in this show, he's got a real temper right he uh he and explodes and he comes off as a real douche especially to any female character that happens to cross his path and he he snaps his finger like and and like hey like, oh shit uh, to a to a reporter and it's it's not good no no it's not good um meanwhile emma stone is just kind of weirdly checked out uh at time like her character not not the actress but like her character is odd as well and definitely has some like kind of sketchy parents, shit going like, on. Her parents are apparently uh known slum lords. Super slum lords. Yeah, yeah. Uh and then Benny Safty, who is so good at playing a complete douchebag reality TV producer that it I, he's he's too good at this. I have not seen him act enough for him to be this much of a fucking bastard in a show. It's going to stick with him. Well, <laughs> like, and what I mm, so his character, what I, what I, and he actually has a treatise on the show as far as, hey, what we're doing here is fucking boring, and 
He's right. not wrong. They show us a genuine just like there's a whole segment where it feels like we're actually just watching the show they're making and it's boring as fuck. Uh, a, a lot longer of a sequence. Yeah. He's, than he's I'm like, dead yeah. right. You, but he immediately like he wants to put teardrops in a, in a mother's eyes to simulate crying. Not even teardrops. He, he goes and gets a fresh bottle. Oh, water right. And just dumps it out of the bottled water cap mm-hmm. onto her face. And then, then he blows his menthol vape in her right. eyes to make him. And red. he, and he's, he's, uh, recording, like he's recording shit. He's, he, they told him not to record. Uh, and, and he's just being, I'm like, there's, so there's a middle ground here of like, I agree with you. This needs to be zhuzhed up a little, but also right, you're going right. fucking but like reality shitty. Like part of this is, is, is supposed to be the feel goodness of, uh, helping out this community and you want it to be trashy and weird. It it feels like from the jump, he's getting ready to profit off of whatever yes. happens. Like, like, Hey, so flip lanthropy might be an interesting show if I do my job a thousand percent. Uh, but more than likely you guys are like, you guys look like you're about to fucking snap. You're fake as shit and thin skinned. I'm pretty sure this is all going to go down in flames and I'm filming that. It feels like he wants to film the dis- demise of this making of like, it. And maybe that's just me watching it going, y'all's show can't work. You two are unlikable and this has to go down in flames. Yeah. But maybe I, I'm like, I don't know if that is intentional in the show or if that's just what I'm bringing to it. Now, from all of that, it would sound like we liked this show and that it was interesting to watch. That would be wrong. You're taking, yeah, you're taking away the wrong thing. This show. Because we're not yet talking about what this show, how this show does all this. Right, and, and, and therein lies the rub. This show... It's a very small rub. I, I hate... I, I, it's been a while since I've hated something on this level of like feeling personal about it and it, very infuriating. It is genuinely... What did you like the the shots they're using? I'm surprised it didn't just show the col- colonoscopy, like you said. Because this show is yeah, so far yeah. up its own ass. Every shot. And I, and I know you think I'm being hyperbolic when I say every shot. But I'm actually not. Every shot has something going on to enhance this realism thing they're doing. And most of the time, what that thing is, is putting a window in between the camera and the characters. Or half a door frame or a potted plant or anything to occlude the shot. Something in the foreground that is obscuring so that, like, we're like, uh, and I get it. I don't want to watch these people either. A door either. peephole. Uh, the, the door peephole slam and then jump was, there's so many, like. I want to save that for like, the, like, because that, that's the end of the episode. And I, that, right. that genuinely. Like, like, look it, here's my, yeah, here's my senior film and. Uh, do you get it? We've it's a it's a framed story, Nick. Do you get it? There, there. It's a constructed reality, and we're gonna go through a window. They're being it's through a it's it's artificial. And what sucks is that because it's so on the nose and weird, it feels amateurish. And I know that this guy, I'm like, no, dude, you are you're a professional. I've seen you make fucking shit. Right. This feels right. It, you can do this like a couple times, and then and then it would have been like, all right, I get what you're doing. Every single shot, every single goddamn shot. It, it, it speaks to like this art, art film type of like indie, art. indie yes. movie. Art film. Fil- yeah. And so, so to uh, enhance the realism of like, and I'm like, yeah, but it's fucking not fun to watch. And even then, sometimes you're enhancing the realism in a way that is like the, the final shot is through a fucking peephole in a door, which is is just fucking annoying. I can't see anything. It's not meant to like actually record through that. I know you're adding a damn, a, a dumb filter. And I thought it was at least the door because it was, they left their apartment and the guy was on the other side. Right. And I'm like, I thought, I thought softy was spying on. Them. Right. But given that it's at least we're watching it from their perspective in the door, the room they just left. Mm-hmm. Right. No, right. at the end of that scene, they open the door opposite of the peephole we are watching and go inside. And I'm like, wait a minute. So the peephole we're watching is some other dude's random door, someone else's random yeah. ass door on the uh, whoever's living on the other side of them. Yeah. What? That breaks the line in a way that who who's watching them through this now? What is the yeah, what's that, the logic of the shot? So there's no yeah there's there's no 
there's no per like it, it's like when you're watching a found footage thing and you're like well, how could that camera why would there be a camera at least there? the other the if you're gonna do the arty weird shit the other shot is that okay they're leaving their home and they're obscured because they don't want that shit inside their home so the home we're looking on it from the outside from the uh outside so that their shittiness that they're discussing doesn't reach inside their home. That's the logic of the shot. I still think that's douchey and too much, but I at least has a logic to it. And then, but to realize right. it's a random other room outside, I'm like, well, just a cool well, shot. Then, then you're not even doing it. it. You just think it looks cool, and I'm telling you, it doesn't. You fucking jackass. Yeah. Uh, the the store. Uh, when the the woman just steps in and then steps out of the store and walks on, dude, I it's still don't like understand. A Twin Peaks scene. Uh, I I have to I have to guess that it's a new a new store in that area. These are and they're gentrifying. They, they it. say later during their uh, their news thing that yeah that all these shops are like high end designer hipster shops, but they're hiring local. Yeah, and I think it, I think that shot was just to show us that this woman who lives there doesn't feel like she belongs. I, but I'm talking, it is. 20 seconds at most it is such a short shot it's, and there's no close-up on her face it's a singular setup with and it never close zooms in it never changes angles she comes in almost walks in and then walks away you have to put so much you have to do so much she's work. not in there long enough to feel uncomfortable like or for it to read that way for me and on like you have to do oh so God. much work for the film like for the fucking uh makers of this to infer that onto that character you have to put that onto that character the character is not portraying that and every scene goes on way too long uh, but to, to enhance this awkwardness that they're doing. And then in the ultimate awkwardness flex, we get the most prosthetic fake. Wow. Tiniest prosthetic micro penis. Uh, yeah, he, he's peeing out of a little smoky. Yeah. And yeah, Nathan Fielder has a micro penis in this show, his character. Right. And and like the prosthetic looks so, f I don't know. I don't know that it needs to look super realistic, but that thing seriously, it looked like he was out of a uh, peeing out of a bachelorette party whistle. So Les, here's why it needs to look super realistic, though. The whole the whole show's uh, premise is uncomfortable realism. So if the penis looks very fake and staged, that actually goes against the rest of the theme of the show. Yeah, oh yeah. Absolutely. The real is it should look real and be uncomfortable. I'm not saying put a real penis, but put more work so it doesn't look fake, which is a I, right. It's a weird sticking point. I know it's a weird thing we're arguing about, but it, it actually does. It's and it's indicative of what's wrong with this show that I hated this show so that much. they don't put the work in to make the penis look real. Fucking Pam and Tommy made the talking penis look more real right, looked than this more real one. than this. Yeah, unless I haven't seen a lot of micro penises, are they beet red and like the size of my thumb? It's it doesn't share his it, half my thumb. it doesn't share his skin tone. It doesn't like no, it's bizarre. Is it rubber banded off? It looks like it's seriously. It feels like a compromise from the actor of like I can't let anyone think it's my penis. It's a micro penis, so it has to be obviously I, fake. Right, like I, I swear to God, I didn't think Fielder would be that guy, but I would swear to God that an actor was like faker than that. Faker than that. I'm trying to date here, man. Yeah, I got a fucking uh, uh, do. Yeah. I got a life here, man. And that uh, then to have an entire plot point of Corbin Burnson. Holy shit! They talk as his father-in-law. They talk for a good like uh, eight to ten minutes, having like a yeah, having like a ten-minute like father-in-law to son-in-law conversation about hey, I don't know if you know, but I have a micro penis as well. We're the Cherry Tomato Boys. Mm -hmm. Oh, is a weird way to put that. Cherry tomatoes are round, like perfectly round. I don't, anyway. Um, and that you should be super proud. You should tell everybody. You should talk about it all the time. Yeah. It's, you should take the, it's really weird. Also, then uh, Fielder goes on like a uh, rant to Stone about like, you you know, I'm pretty open about it. Like, I don't, I, like, I don't hide this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Also, their sex. Is that an invisible friend or a ghost? So they, she keeps yelling out a woman. Oh boy, this show. Uh, I don't like having these conversations or digging into these at all. But I guess here we uh, we're fucking diving in. So when they're having sex, they portray a graphic sex scene with him pleasuring her with a dildo, and him masturbating furiously crouched uh, next to the bed. 
once she lets him. Uh, and she and he asks her uh, where Stephen is and what Stephen wants during the entire thing because apparently, I like, I, look, maybe I wasn't paying a clear enough attention throughout the rest of this, but like, is Stephen her imaginary friend or is Stephen the dildo? The if it sounds like I, it, I thought it was the dildo at first, but then it sounded like it was an imaginary friend. But then later, it seemed like maybe she believes in ghosts. I think, and it, one, I think it maybe it's a maybe it's a is it just a role play that we're pretending a dude named Steven is watching us and command like uh, he wants to fucking or that I, Steven is fucking you, uh, and he needs your it, it again goes on. I would have cut it in the middle for comedic effect, and they just let it fucking go on. Watch her orgasm come down fully play it and then cut to the scene. And I was like, well, I'm glad we watched mm -hmm, all mm -hmm. of that. Like you get the, that's what sucks about all these scenes is that you get the idea of the scene two minutes in. And it, mm -hmm. and it's never, it never gets deeper than that. It's not like they're. No, no, it just goes more awkward for comedy. Right. I guess. So I'm, I'm like, yeah. geez, cut on some of this stuff so that you can like spend more time doing other stuff or maybe why I should like these characters. Or at least care yeah. about their journey or what's going on. For a single 61-minute episode about micropenises, I really felt the length. You will not be rewarded for that. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not even going to say fuck. High five. I'm not even going to say fuck you in a uh, director. High five. No. No. You've not earned it. There's the very tiny rope. <laughs> you know what you did. Steven says no. Steven, uh, Steven says that he needs you to earn it. Oh my god, I hated this show. So uh, there may be another episode out by now. Who cares? Uh, it's on Paramount. If so, is that where this was? Showtime? Showtime. Watched it through Paramount Plus. Yeah, uh, I'm good on the curse. I don't want to. I do do not want to watch any more of this. No matter what window you fucking put it through, or fucking people, <laughs> what no. plant you put in the no. foreground. I love that. Even the the creators i'm like is it a nervous tick do you do you not want to watch your own show is that why you keep obfuscating it like uh, i don't really want to watch any see any of these people oh that's a lot better see if they really if they really had any stones if they really cared about their art they'd take it a step further and the curse would be a show that is only on in the background of ncis episodes <laughs> if there's a tv on in in this other show the curse is playing and if you watch enough of the other episodes in the background, you can put the show together. Now, that would be art. Someone tell the Zafties, get on it. Well, I, I, I believe they do have the stones, Last, I, they, they have the Emma stones for it. They have the Emma stones for it. She seems down for really weird art stuff, I guess. I don't know. God, what a fucked up show. Uh, the curse. Ta-da. Uh, we have no desserts this week, we do, do we? Loki. We do? Loki, that's oh, right. That's whether or not right. we want to discuss forgot. it without Randy, but we're discussing it without Randy. I, let's, let's be real we, about we're, it. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna discuss it again next week. Don't, don't worry. Uh, but yeah, we're, we definitely got to discuss it. So Loki ended with... Damn, I really enjoyed Loki. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this whole season was fucking awesome. Uh, the reboot reset going on. Uh, Kang be Kangin. Well, from the opening of this episode, when they decide that, like, okay, so how long will it take me to learn physics and engineering and stuff? Like, I don't know, centuries? <laughs> uh, centuries and later. And now he's like a, yeah, yeah, love it. So now Loki is officially hundreds of years past everybody. And all of these things make him more and more different from who we know as Loki and it's like clued who me anybody. In early going forward, I'm like, oh, I think we might be done with this particular version of Loki. And nobody else in the MCU has seen him really nope. for these two seasons, right? Mm -hmm. So it's going to be a very, very different dude uh, when they ever run into him again. Of course, by the end of the episode, who knows if anybody ever runs into him again. I did see a post online and I wanted to run this past you. Is he why the time stone is green? If you go in by the Ouroboros logic of it, that he was always why the time... I would say that in the comics, the time, time stone was green just earlier. Like, it's just a happy uh, coincidence. Well, the time, stone, the time stone was actually yellow in the comics. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, they, they've retroactively made it green Well, during one of the last, like, retcon things. Man, I'm going to say that they did not have the forethought. They did not know Loki was going to be, like, the god of stories by the end of this, I don't think. Like, right, when right. they made the original fucking Infinity Stones. But 
at least for the MCU. But I, I mean, hey, that's what's great. That's what's great about these uh, time travel and like, uh, you know, concept high concept shows that you can like go like, oh, shit, is that he's why the time uh, time stone is always green or something. Mm hmm. It's all adding up, Kevin Feige. And it leads me to my, and I want to stress that I liked Loki season two. It's really great. One of the best Marvel shows that they have put out. So please. I think I know what you're going to say. And everything emotionally works at the, at, for this ending. Uh, the only thing is that I don't understand Loki's powers and thereby and i know that you can't explain them because they don't have the fucking logic to really back it up but in 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 practice when he's taking those threads and doing stuff to them like he he's juicing them up with his uh his his time electricity and i and, and, and doing me wrong that scene uh, 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 I think I, I'm like this. Scene, okay, so this scene emotionally works, but in the back of my mind, I'm like, I don't really know what's happening, do I? What the living fuck is he doing? And then he's got to gather them all up, but and they were dying. I guess they're vines that are withering, and he 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 can he can um. And all, the only thing Sylvie them? says is that he's giving us a chance. So and I mean, maybe I would have put in a line of dialogue, but my my inference is that he is replacing the loom now. Yeah, he turned it into the tree. The problem with the loom is that it could not, uh, no matter how much they build capacity, you can't ca capacitate infinity. And unless, yeah. hey, he's a god, and now he he controls that, and he generates, in like, he can expand infinitely like the timelines. So, like, he's he's the peace fix. Like, uh yeah. Yeah, you can't make a machine that can do what Loki can do. So instead, he's gonna, it's like, it's now his job. And him yeah, growing yeah. those horns, him sitting on the throne, it looking like a tree. His glorious purpose. All, it all emotional. I'm like, oh man, that all feels great. It all feels works. real. I love it. What did he and do? And also, I, at the end of it, us. I'm like, dude, gun to my head. I can't tell you exactly what, he, what he's doing. Or so what. are Kang still a problem? I don't know what you did. <laughs> I, and that's one of the things, too. Like, at least they show that the... The TVA is now a Kang hunting force of like they don't know about us right, yet. Right, which is what they should have been for the last few episodes. Right. We were we were wanting them to become Kang hunter. Well, I mean, it's the only logical place to go with that. But because, and I'm like, okay, this would hit, this would hit more, and his self sacrifice would hit more if I actually knew like one what he was doing and how like oh does that mean he has to do this? He has to do this forever. He's condemned for it. Like, and and then I realized I'm like, oh shit. But I don't really know why he has time powers to begin with. That was the something that started this season. Right. And Yeah, with all his time slippiness. And his yeah, time we, slippiness I, I is because why? Because Kang gave it to them? I think they kind of imply that. Or Kang's plan involves that. I don't really know. I do like going back far like going back farther and like, okay, I can't do it faster, but I gotta go back farther in time. Which right, right, right. Honestly, would be my first move of like, oh well, if you're going back, like just go back farther, man. Like, right. And so, and then going back, and I do love that this season recognizes the problem with Sylvie of like, Sylvie is not the Loki that's going to sacrifice herself because you realize that Sylvie, this entire time, could have easily been our Loki and solving all these problems and doing all this stuff. She had a time. She had a temp pad for most of it. She had a temp pad for most of it. She honestly could do it easier than him. But because she represents what he was in his past, she can't, mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. get by it. Yeah, she'll never be like that. And uh, he kind of breaks down to her. I love that he breaks down to her, like, look, I've been at this a thousand years now. I've been at this a thousand different ways. I'm telling you it's either the sacred timeline or nothing. There's not, uh, like, I, I can't get the loom to work. Like, it's... It, I either destroy all the timelines and there's no, none of them, or we make one work. And she's like, right. well, still offering no solution. He has to figure out a solution himself. And honestly, I don't yeah. understand how he figured out he could do like, that. Well, I don't accept that. Like, I, it, it's not a thing for you to accept. It's, uh... <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, honestly, I'm not sure if the season really, I'm like, do I think, I, sometimes I think they get what they've done with Sylvie. And sometimes I feel like, I think you've overclocked her a little bit uh, and didn't mean to. 
on, you know, yeah. the free will freedom warrior or whatever. Yeah, because the only way that I can accept her is that she's the infuriating original Loki that would have been a villain. Well, honestly, she should, at the end of it, realize, uh, from his sacrifice, realize the responsibility now foisted upon her. And I don't think she does. She does not. I, I feel like she feels like Loki learned her lesson of, see? <laughs> <laughs> see, I told you you could, like, no, I only... I told you there was a third choice. Like, no, I only did this after, like, a thousand... Ugh. Like, you can't right. take credit and, for my thousand I, years of work to try and get this done. And I'm glad our solution was that Loki has to go sit up there and hold those things forever. Because <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, I assume he can't come down from that without time fucking up. Right. And honestly, I should you should have pointed that out to Sylvia. I'm like, hey, I got a job for you where you get to sit and do nothing. Right. Shouldn't, that should appeal to you. We have the same fucking powers. Yeah. It Because I don't know why he has time powers or how they work. Or do I don't, we? I don't know why yeah. he can't. He has to be the only one. Or how, I don't know how he knows what he's doing can work. Again, all of it is feel. All of it based on the feel, and the right, feel right. works. I can't stress enough that it feels like it fucking works. Yeah, it, it, uh, but at the same time, like I had a big shitty grin on my face and was like, "This is awesome. What is he doing? I don't know." Me, unless we're looking at each other, like, "Do you have any idea what he's doing?" I don't know. All I know is that no. it's awesome. I, I I agree. But he's he's definitely got to grab those time ropes and green them up and green them. They don't green up soon, Nick. And because I was like, "Hey, he's <laughs> saving them. The green means they're saved, right? Right." And, and I, think. I, I, I think I think that makes sense. Yeah. Somehow I mean, turning it from a, a loom and uh, turning the loom sideways and making it a tree is uh, fractal and, and, and works now, I guess. I sure. I, I, there's a, <laughs> sure. There's a lot of stuff that you have to like, uh, hold on a second. Like, uh, I think this works. I think this works. All right, Doctor Who, that's the most important oak leaf in the universe. Fucking A. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That said, I, man, I loved Loki. This was Absolutely. really fun. Absolutely. Uh, the endings for Mobius. Uh, especially really hits hard. Yeah. And uh, uh, I guess I'm a little disappointed that Miss Minutes gets to, is, is. That's what I thought you were going to say earlier is that they sideline Miss Minutes in the, in like a one-off. Uh, well, they did that. The, they did that in season one as well. You know, when I, when I saw, thought Miss Minutes was going to be the big bad of season one and then like, mm-hmm, Oh, it makes mm-hmm. sense that it's Kang. But in season two, they really like, they, so, like, off screen the, Loki wins her trust to like fix the loom or whatever and it really doesn't um, amount to anything uh, but I don't know uh, and then even Renslayer has a uh, we got an answer for like hey is there the fucking purple lion at the end of time still oh yep there is <laughs> yeah and, and honestly I'm like oh shit so he didn't go if, him going back in time and making a deal with Miss Minutes doesn't change what happens to Renslayer there's a couple things where because he can go back in time yeah. and change stuff now, there's going to be there's going to be screen ran articles of like, here's how Loki could have fixed this without, you know, right. Right. And saved everyone right. like all those people that got killed in the cube. Do they have to get killed in the cube? Like. Right. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I remember. Yeah. Because like, that wasn't because yep. that happened right before the loom explode. So if he goes back, mm-hmm, it's mm-hmm. not really any skin off his ass to go save those people if he needs like. But I feel like they're they show it's not like they show up later. Those people are all still dead. Nope, they're they're in the floor. Mm-hmm. Yeah, weird. Because we only Dark. go see him back and talk to Miss Minutes as the coup is happening, not before the coup. It, you know. I also mm-hmm. like say what you like. Jonathan Majors does a great job with the Kang thing and him going back. Oh man, when he <laughs> when he realizes that when the when the first like Loki is talking to him like. Oh, mm-hmm. how many times have you been through this? Like, is this the first time we had this conversation? Have, have you met t- 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 timely yet? T- 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man, him showing that it's like that. Even he, like, yeah. I mean, I've met a ton of other kings. They're fucking dill holes. Like, yeah. like even he is like, oh yeah, you met that idiot one of me. Yeah. Well, no, I love that kings can't stand each other. Like, no, like, no, I'm, I'm cool. Those other kings all suck. <laughs> Yeah, it's very Rick. Just yeah, oh, absolutely, <laughs> very, very Rick and uh, uh, Council of Ricks. And I also like how Loki gets to change to turn that on him, though. Of like, oh, you haven't figured out how to stop time yet or pause it. Oh, okay. And then suddenly Loki does the, the like with a snap, doesn't even need the temp pad, and like, what makes you think this is the first time we've had this fucking conversation? Yeah. And it's a uh, again, yeah, all this stuff that feels good in the moment feels right, and which ultimately I do feel is more important than logicking it out. I, well, it's a time travel show. You, you, you knew the entire time you can't stare too hard at it. I do. I do feel like we were 
one line of dialogue away or something that would make it so I knew what was happening in the as he's making the sacrifice. I just wanted to right. I want to know that he is. I I feel like he's making a fa- sacrifice, but I don't really know for sure because I don't know what's going on. Yeah, thank God they invented the such and such machine so we can smoke cigarettes in the time stream. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. You know, like yeah. just something so I know the significance of what he's doing and the the power scale of it, like and and uh, how. You know, uh, he's found his glorious purpose, it, it, and it again, it all, it all works. It's not like it it mm-hmm. it, it ruins anything, but also, Miss Minutes it, is just rebooted at the end of this. Like, hey, we cool on that, and and Obi is just like, she gonna kill us again? Mm. I don't know. <laughs> I loved that. Yeah, yeah. This uh, this is my favorite Marvel show, and uh, definitely since this is so much better than Secret Invasion, in my opinion. Oh yeah, way it's. And and I it made me excited. To, I haven't seen the Marvels yet, but it made me excited to see more Marvel again, mm-hmm. uh, which is what they needed to do with it. Uh, also, fucking a, I love Loki. Damn it, Tom Tom Hiddleston just kills this. Oh, absolutely, yeah. It feels like uh, this particular Loki is going to take a time out, which doesn't mean we won't see. You know, this is a multi universe. Like it just depends on the paycheck to see other actors and shit back in it again. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I would I would love them to need to go get Loki for something and end up with Richard E. Grant. Again. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Like just have somebody later, like go grab a Loki and show back up of like, is that not you said you were Loki? <laughs> no, I, I got am. him. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, he's an alligator, uh, but I got him. I got him, though. He's definitely a Loki or just green. We're not sure. Damn it. Alligator Loki. So all the Lokis makes me want to rewatch season one. Mm hmm. And, you know, there's a gap. We got time. Uh, I think that's going to about wrap it up for us this week. Uh, next week, we should have uh, Randiferous back amongst us. And, uh, and we'll discuss uh, all the board games he played and uh, probably nothing on TV. And then, yeah, I don't know what the fuck we'll talk about. <laughs> uh, Quantum Leap will be back. We'll discuss that. I don't know. Laura Dex is done. Loki's done. Fucking there's no desserts. There's no nothing. Just eat gruel. I guess we could watch episode two of The Curse. Yeah. Well, until next time. <laughs> TV Dudes out. The TV Dudes is an independently run podcast out of Austin, Texas. We are exclusively listener supported. If you'd like to help us out, go to patreon.com slash TV Dudes. You can also find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at TV Dudes. All the music for our show is done by our friend and original TV dude, Gregory J. Amani Smith. To find out more about us, go to the TV Dudes.com. I'm Randy Lander. I'm Les Weiler. And I'm Kyle Scott. Thanks for listening. <laughs>